Hey, what's going on? It's Caesar from the Sprint Project here. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a sprint workout in the street. First, we have to warm up. The first drill are high knees. I'm sure you've seen these before. The problem is we have to make sure we're doing them right so that we're not injuring our lower back and so that we're making our sprint technique better rather than worse. You see, during sprinting or running in general, People tend to land on their heels because they're striking far in front of their hips with their foot pointed upwards. This drill corrects this mistake because in this position, you don't even have to think about it. It naturally lands under your hips on the ball of your foot. The mistake you want to avoid is having your leg collapse excessively on each step. Because one, you waste time bending and extending the leg, and two, the impact goes into your knee instead of into the ground. If you look at elite sprinters, when they're upright and they land, their leg is almost completely straight. Not only will you protect your lower back, your knees, but you will also be able to move faster and build stronger legs. And I'm not gonna go into massive detail on everything you have to know about warming up or for sprints, because I already have a whole video on that, link will be in the description. The next next drill I'm gonna give you are leg cycles. There's other names for this drill, but I call them leg cycles because it's the same motion as when you're on a bicycle. This is very similar to sprinting itself, except we're taking small steps and hopping in the air in order to give ourselves enough time to recover the leg, swing it around, and put it underneath the hips. Now to the untrained eye, it might look like I'm not even doing anything, but what's really going on here is instead of letting this leg come all the way and get a full extension, I'm recovering it much earlier than you would want to during actual sprinting. So I'm keeping my step very short, but I'm emphasizing this circular motion so that I can focus on driving this leg back under the hips on the ball of the foot. Compared to the track, the asphalt does not help you absorb the impact of each foot strike. Normally, this would be a bad thing because it puts more stress on your joints, but we can actually use this to our advantage because we're gonna get immediate feedback on our technique with each step. This forces us to land softly on the ball of the foot in order to avoid painfully hitting the ground with your heels and destroying your lower back. Here's the plot twist. Instead of doing sprints, we're actually gonna do this drill for our main workout. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna do 20 reps, one each leg. We're gonna walk it back, that'll be a rest. And we're gonna do five to 10 rounds, gradually increasing in intensity with each round. If your sprint technique is underdeveloped and you just go out and start sprinting, you're reinforcing that technique, right? And you could actually be training your body to become slower. With this drill, technically you're not sprinting, but it's so close, it's nearly the same thing. So you're still getting all the benefits, including fat loss benefits, conditioning benefits, and hormonal benefits. The only difference is that this forces you to build good sprint technique so that you get the speed benefits as well. Something I wanna make sure to mention too is when slowing down, you don't wanna do it too quickly. You wanna give yourself some space because the faster you slow down, the more impact that you have on your knees, which is more important when we're on the street on something's hard like this. And if you have a hill like the one I'm using right behind me, use it and go up the hill because that slight incline is gonna help you get that foot underneath the hips just because it naturally puts your body at a slight forward lean. You can even do it in position before worrying about distance because this way you're making sure that you're not stepping forward and you're landing directly under the hips. In order to be safe and avoid injury, remember to look out for potholes, rocks, or uneven surfaces. Pick streets that are not too busy. Definitely don't use major roads where people might be speeding and might try to swerve around you. And unless the street is closed, I wouldn't even use headphones so that I can hear if a car is coming. Like I mentioned already, the ground is very unforgiving. So the biggest mistake you wanna avoid is a heel strike. That's why I'm giving you these two drills and structuring the workout this way so you don't experience the same issues I did when I first started doing sprints on the street. Before finishing off, we have to cool down, of course. You can pick any five movements and hold it for 30 seconds each doing static stretching. Here are five movements you can do. Hamstrings 30 seconds. Adductors 30 seconds. Hips 30 seconds. 
calves, 30 seconds. And chest, 30 seconds. Two rounds of these minimum, then we can walk it out and finish off our workout. And that concludes this video. If you learned anything new, anything helpful, hit the like button. And to learn more about warming up, click here. To see a sprint workout at the track, click here. Any constructive feedback, drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.